Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I want to put this video out because there is a chance after this summer, after the big lawsuit and the changes with the National Association of Realtor, probably a very good chance that many of you buyers are going to go into a transaction unrepresented. So you're going to go directly to the listing agent to buy the house because you can't afford to pay a buyer's agent a commission or the seller isn't willing to pay a commission. So it's going to change things up a little bit, possibly. We're not sure yet. But if you're going to go it alone, then you need to be careful. And there's some things you need to be aware of that can cost you a ton of money. And I'm going to go over some of those here and kind of let you know areas where you should concentrate. And the very first one is, you know, who's going to write the contract for you? Now, you can probably just write a contract on a napkin and send it off to the listing agent. And then he will put it on this official form here. That's a possibility. But you want to make sure you understand this agreement. Now, I'm not going to go line by line, but they're the very first page of this contract says attention buyer. And it tells you to read the entire contract before you sign it. So many people just don't pay attention to this. You're about to make a major purchase. Make sure you know what you're agreeing to and not agreeing to, especially in new construction. You're going to put down a good faith deposit. There are a million ways for you to lose that if you decide you want to cancel a transaction. And it's really hard in new construction. And they require down payments and deposits over $20,000 in most cases. Now, you can put that on a good faith deposit on a resale home with 1%, $1,000, $2,000, whatever you agree to and whatever the seller agrees to. New construction, be careful. Review the residential seller's property disclosure statement. Let's talk about that for a moment. Some sellers, they don't do a very good job of filling that out. There's every seller and every seller's agent are supposed to disclose material facts, defects. Did the roof leak once? If you know that, you have to disclose that. And uh, some people just don't. Flippers, people, people that purchase a house and remodel it, I don't know why a little hiccup there. They go, well, seller never lived in a house. So what? One of the questions is, are, do you live near an airport? Um, you know, do you live next to anything, any toxic waste? They probably know more about that house than the previous owner because they completely remodel it. So don't accept that. Require a seller disclosure form. Review the inspection paragraph. General home inspection, pool inspection, pe pest inspection. Have it inspected. Confirm your ability to obtain insurance. Find out during the inspection period if you can get it insured because you've only got 10 days. So you want to call the insurance company and go, hey, I'm buying 123 Main Street. Uh, what's my insurance going to cost me? You need to know that early in the transaction. The listing agent that you're working with, they're not going to tell you that. They're not going to walk you through this. You're on your own on this, folks. Read the title commitment within five days of receipt. Read the CC&Rs. If it's in an HOA, you want to know the rules. Make sure you know them in that 10-day inspection period because if there's something in there that you don't like, you can cancel the contract. You can cancel the contract during that 10-day period for whatever reason. You decided you don't like the neighborhood. You drove through there at night. Eh, you weren't really comfortable with what was going on there at night. Or you know what? You, you saw the neighbor and you thought, boy, I'm really not going to like him. You can get out. You got 10 days, but you get past that 10 day inspection period and you're rolling along and you read the CC and R's and you don't like what you see, you're stuck. Think ahead, conduct a thorough pre-closing walkthrough. So these are just some of the warnings that are on here and heads up. And then of course there's wire transfer fraud, but sellers, there's things that you need to look for as well. And that is somebody just brought you a buyer. Uh, before you accept the contract, you need to find out if they're qualified because we're seeing a lot of sales right now falling out of escrow for whatever reason, usually because they can't get it financed. So your selling agent needs to call the lender and walk through the numbers. How much are they putting down? What are they qualified for? He can't ask them what their credit score is. That's none of his business. That's the lender's business. But you need to understand that there's a well-qualified buyer coming to your doorstep and not somebody that's just going to try and buy your house. And if it doesn't work, then, uh, oh, well, I get my escrow money 
back, my earnest money back. Not so fast. Everything in here is kind of a little bit weighted towards the buyer. There is a loan contingency here on line 70 in this contract. Buyer's obligation to complete sales contingent upon buyer getting loan approval. Okay. Now here's the, in, the kicker down here, an unfulfilled loan contingency. This contract shall be canceled and buyer shall be entitled to a return of the earnest money if after diligent and good faith effort, buyer is unable to attain loan approval without conditions and delivers notice of inability to obtain a loan approval no later than three days prior to close of escrow. If they can't get the loan, they have to let you know within three days. But if they don't deliver the notice, the seller can issue a cure notice. Well, that adds on another three days. These are real things that go on in transactions all the time. And if they can't get the loan and you're finding out three days before close, you've already packed. So you want to make sure sellers that buyers are qualified buyers. Don't put yourself in this situation. You just part earnest, earnest money down. So let's say in this case, you put down $10,000 good faith deposit and you find out you can't get the loan. Well, why can't you get the loan? The lender has to put forth a good faith effort, and so do you. So let's say you went out and you told the lender you were going to put down $25,000 on this home, but you bought something. Uh, you bought a used car. You didn't finance it. You didn't hurt your credit. You bought a used car. Now you don't have the money. You're getting them the closing, and they go, hey, Rick, you got to give us $25,000. You go, no, I don't have it. Or you're relying on your 401k for a large down payment, and the market tanks. I don't have it. Well, that's not a good faith effort. A good faith effort is you have this money, park it somewhere because you're going to be using it as a down payment. Now, not only do you not have the money for the down payment, you're not getting your earnest money back. Sellers, you need to know that. If somebody's canceling the contract, contract find out why. And, uh, you know, some lenders will, I've seen them not be honest about why you can't get the loan. So, uh, don't just let title give that earnest money back just on a whim. New construction, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder because you're dealing with their lender. So if all of a sudden something comes up and you think you can't buy this house, this the interest payment's not what you thought it was going to be. There's all kinds of things that might make you a little nervous. And you go, I want out of this contract. No, our lender says you're approved. It's right here. You, you, you get out, you're going to lose your $20,000. There's a lot of stuff there that uh, can come up and bite you right here. Interest rate, necessary funds. Buyer agrees that the inability to obtain loan approval due to failure to lock the interest rate and points by separate written agreement with the lender or failure to have the down payment or other funds due from the buyer necessary to obtain the loan without conditions and close this transaction is not an unfulfilled loan contingency. See what it's telling you there in the contract? Interest rates and not having the money at the closing are not good enough for you to get your deposit back. So if you're going to enter into a contract with a seller, relying on the seller's agent to help you through, through this, they're not really going to go to bat for you on any of this stuff. So you need to be careful. There's a lot of things out there that you need to be careful with. Also, make sure you understand when you look at the contract, what you're obligated to make sure that the appliances that are in the house are listed on the contract, not just refrigerator. Well, guess what? They can take that nice stainless steel GE refrigerator, the ice maker out and put in a little wine fridge in the same spot. All you had on the contract was refrigerator. Best thing to do is what's the model number. What's the serial number of that refrigerator put that in the contract. I want that refrigerator. I want that washer and dryer, not just washer and dryer. I've seen people try to take out brand new upscale washer and dryers and put in old used ones. Well, guess what? Unless you wrote down the detail and just clicked off washer and dryer, there's nothing you can do. You can't even back out of the sale. So I'm raising this because we're seeing a lot of homes fall out of escrow. And I just want to make sure that you're not one of those people. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com.